Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learned about the integration techniques of integrated circuits. In this session, we are going to learn about the evolution of microprocessors. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover today. Today, we will learn about the evolution of microprocessor with respect to Intel microprocessors. So let's begin. Now the concept of integrated circuit, which is mostly referred to as CHIP, was conceived in 1952. In 1959, Gene Herney and Robert Noyes's invention of the planar process with aluminum metallization at Fairchild Semiconductor paved the way for mass production of integrated circuits. Now what is planar process? Well, it is a semiconductor fabrication technique that involves creating a flat two-dimensional surface on a semiconductor material. So basically, the planar process ensures a flat surface. On the other hand, aluminum metallization refers to the process of developing a layer of aluminum on a substrate that is the base material on which the circuit is built. So, depositing a layer of aluminum on the base or the substrate, this process helps build the electronic connections within the integrated circuit. In other words, the planar process ensures this flat surface and using aluminum metallization, we create the electronic wiring within the circuit. Now, the progress of integration circuitry was very rapid. Gordon Earl Moore at Fairchild Semiconductor predicted that the number of transistors on a silicon chip would increase from 50 to 65,000 within a decade from 1965 to 1975. This prediction was recognized as his first articulation of the Moore's law, suggesting that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit will double about every two years. By the way, Gordon Earl Moore was also the co-founder and the former CEO of Intel Corporation. Let's talk about Intel now. Since in our due course, we will mainly be focusing on Intel's 8085 microprocessors, so evidently, learning about Intel is a bit of a necessity. Intel was co-founded by Gordon Earl Moore and Robert Noyes. Now let me tell you, before shifting into the microprocessor business, Intel primarily produced memory chips. I hope you remember that as one of the milestones of the second generation of computers, we studied a bit about IBM System 360. The System 360 was a family of mainframe computers. It used a magnetic core memory which was a primary form of random access memory as its main memory or main storage, which was relatively faster than these magnetic tapes which were used as secondary storage. So clearly, early computers used a combination of discrete components for processing and magnetic core for storage. Memory was typically separate from the processing unit and the data transfer between these two was relatively slow. So, Intel's primary focus at that time was on producing high-speed memory. Intel Corporation was initially focused on creating semiconductor memory like dynamic RAMs and erasable programmable ROMs for digital computers. Now, the advent of microprocessors was actually accidental. In 1969, the Japanese calculator manufacturer Busycom approached Intel with the design of a small calculator which required 12 custom chips. At that time, the Intel engineer, Mauritian Ted Hoff, felt that a general purpose logic device could replace the separate multiple components. This idea led to the development of the first microprocessor and as a result, in 1971, as a member of the Intel's 4000 family, which comprised the 4001, that is, the 256-byte ROM, the 4002, a 40-byte RAM, the 4003, a 10-bit input-output shift register, and 4004, 
that is the world's first 4-bit microprocessor was introduced. Now in Intel's 4000 family, apart from the microprocessor and the memory units, there were several support chips. Now it was not truly a general purpose microprocessor as it was basically designed for the 141PF desktop printing calculator. Now the idea of microprocessor was conceived by Ted Hoff, but Federico Fagan and his team at Intel realized the idea into hardware producing the Intel's 4004 4-bit microprocessor. Now what do I mean by 4-bit in here? Well, this is the word length of the microprocessor. Now what exactly is word length? Word length defines the size of binary data the processor can handle at once. And specifically, Intel's 4004 microprocessor could handle 4-bit data at once. Due to this reason, all the different memory devices which supported Intel 4004 were also built keeping the handling of 4-bit data in mind. Now we just learnt about the Intel's 4000 family and there we also discussed about the 4002 RAM, didn't we? Let me explain the organization of this particular random access memory. Now, 4002 RAM, as I told you earlier, it's a 40 byte RAM. Now, what is 1 byte? 1 byte is 8 bits. However, Intel 4004 microprocessor is supposed to handle only 4 bits of data at once. Due to that reason, in Intel's 4002 RAM, we had 80 address locations, and all of them were of 4 bits each. That is, Two of the address locations were capable of storing one byte of data. And therefore, 40 pair of address locations could store 40 byte data. And that's why the 4002 RAM is actually a 40 byte RAM. Notice, this RAM is also built in such a way that once the microprocessor 4004 goes to any of these addresses, it will be able to access 4 bits of data at once. And the reason why the 4002 RAM chip is designed in such a way is just because Intel's 4004's word length is 4 bit. I hope the concept of word length is clear to you now. Remember, word length defines the size of the binary data that the microprocessor can handle at once. Now, after Intel's 4004, Federico Fagan and team at Intel designed a new chip for controlling CRT, that is cathode ray displays, produced by Computer Terminal Corporation, which was later named as DataPoint. However, since that chip didn't meet DataPoint's functional requirement of speed, and after it got rejected by DataPoint, in 1972, Intel Corporation introduced this chip as Intel 8008, the world's first 8-bit microprocessor. In case of Intel 8008, the word length was 8-bit, that is, it could handle 8-bit of data at once. Now, Intel's 8008 was widely used in the famous Mark 8 computer kit. Realizing the potential of 8008, Fagan and team at Intel started improving it and in 1974, Intel introduced Intel 8080. The word length of 8080 was 8-bit 8 as well. The Intel 8080 really created the microprocessor market. Some other notable 8-bit microprocessors were Motorola 6800, which was designed for use in automotive and industrial applications. Another example is Rockwell PPS-8, which had innovative and powerful instruction set architecture. Now, Intel's 8080 required certain support chips like 8224, the clock generator, basically the timing and control unit for 8080. Along with this, it also required the 8228, the system controller, which was used to assist the 8080 microprocessor with the interfacing as the system bus driver. 
Now, with improvements in the integration technology, Intel was able to integrate these chips on a single microprocessor chip. And as a result, in 1977, Intel introduced the Intel's 8085 8-bit microprocessor. After 8085, Intel shifted their focus on increasing the word length of the processor. In the year 1978, Intel introduced 8086, Intel's first 16-bit microprocessor, which incorporated 29,000 transistors on a single microprocessor chip. It laid the foundation of the x86 architecture, which later became a standard for personal computers. With improved performance and compatibility, it really contributed to the popularity of Intel microprocessors. The later versions of 8086 were Intel 80186, Intel 80286, about which we already have studied in the previous session, that it consisted of 1,34,000 transistors on a single microprocessor chip. Now, I just mentioned about the x86 architecture, right? Notice where the name is coming from. In 1978, Intel introduced Intel's 8086. And the later versions were Intel 80186, Intel 80286, and so on. So, when we say x, it replaces this version numbers. Now, in the later version of Intel 8086, Intel offered wider CPU word length. That is, apart from 8086, 80186, and 80286, which were all of 16 bit word length, in 1985, Intel 80386, Intel's first 32 bit microprocessor, was introduced. It was comprised of 2,75,000 transistors on a single microprocessor chip. With a wider word length, Intel 80386 was capable of multitasking. The next model of x86 family was Intel's 80486, the 32-bit microprocessor with built-in math coprocessor. Then in 1993, Intel launched Intel's Pentium 1, which marked the origin of Intel's Pentium series. As you already know, it falls under the ULSI integration because if you remember, it consisted 3.1 million transistors on a chip. Pentium 1 allowed the computers to process real-world data like speech, sound, handwriting, and photographic images. Up next, the 7.5 million transistor Intel Pentium 2 microprocessor, which was introduced in 1977, was specifically designed to process audio, video and graphics data efficiently. Then in 1999 came the Intel's Pentium 3 processor with 9.5 million transistors which was designed for advanced imaging, 3D, streaming audio, video and speech recognition. Finally, the last 32-bit microprocessor of Intel, that is Intel Pentium 4, which was launched in the year 2000 with more than 42 million transistors on a single microprocessor chip. Remember, starting from Intel 80386 till Pentium 4, all of these had the CPU word length of 32 bit. Pentium 4 enabled the users to create professional quality movies, communication using real time video and voice, render 3D graphics in real time and simultaneously run several multimedia applications while being connected to the internet. After Pentium 4, in the year 2001, Intel introduced the Itanium processor, which was the first 64-bit microprocessor of Intel. It was well suited for high-performance computing applications like e-commerce security transactions, large databases, mechanical computer-aided engineering, and sophisticated scientific and engineering computing. Once the 64-bit CPU word length was achieved, Intel now started research and development on integrating more than one core on a single microprocessor chip. Remember, each of these cores could handle 64-bit data at once. In 2006, 
Intel's Core 2 Duo, the dual core architecture for improved multitasking was introduced. In the same year, Intel also introduced the budget friendly Intel Dual Core. Then, from the year 2010 onwards, with development in the dual core technology, Intel's Intel Core i3 was introduced. So, these were all the Intel's dual core microprocessors, which had each core operating 64 bit data at once. Nonetheless, Intel was not restricted to dual core only. Intel also began its research and development on quad core processors as well. Therefore, as a result, just one year after 2006, when Intel Core 2 Duo was introduced, in 2007, Intel launched Intel Core 2 Quad. From the year 2009 onwards, Intel Core i5 came into the market. However, from 2008 onwards, that is one year prior to Core i5, Intel Core i7, the high performance processors, hit the market. So, these were all the Intel's quad core processors. After this, Intel started focusing on the octa core processors, that is, 864 bit cores on a single chip. From the year 2017 onwards, Intel came up with the later versions of Core i7. This Core i7 had 8 cores, and eventually, Intel also introduced Core i9. So, these are all the significant microprocessors of the Intel Corporation. Now, you might be wondering, if all these advanced processors are there, then why should we learn about Intel 8085? Well, the answer to that is, learning Intel 8085 microprocessor offers several advantages for understanding the fundamentals of microprocessor architecture and programming. Older microprocessors have simpler architectures compared to the modern ones. This simplicity makes it easier to comprehend the underlying principles without the complexities introduced by the advanced features. Finally, learning the assembly language programming on an earlier microprocessor will help us understand the basics of low level programming which is crucial for understanding how high-level programming languages are translated into machine codes. So, these are the reasons why in our due course, we are going to focus on Intel's 8085, the 8-bit microprocessor. So, in this session, we learned about the evolution of microprocessors with respect to Intel Corporation. Alright people, that will be all for this session. From the next session onwards, we will learn about various number systems which will help us understand the architecture of Intel's 8085 microprocessor even better. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.